Proverbs, and tonight we're going to look at some characters in the book of Proverbs, and specifically, we're going to look at the fool. We're going to look at the fool in Proverbs, and I'm going to, Lord willing, explain some of these fools. We may not get through all of it tonight. The idea from this will give you some three concepts at the end to be able to, to, be able to walk away with some things to learn. And then the other idea would be, as you continue to read the book of Proverbs, that you would begin to identify what's being evaluated here, and to avoid these behaviors and characteristics and tendencies. The fool is not looked upon fondly in the book of Proverbs. The fool is sometimes looked upon fondly in society. There are times in society that a foolish person is laughed at, lauded, entertainment, paid an exorbitant amount, an obscene amount of money, of money, being foolish. We'll find some of the characteristics of a fool that people will pay even more for that in the society and the world's perspective. But in the book of Proverbs, the fool is never one that we're to look up to or to hang around or to gather counsel from. We'll find in the book of Proverbs that someone who is a fool, who is foolish, is to be avoided, to be reprimanded, to be taught, all right, to be given discretion and wisdom from God. This is the look of the fool in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, there are some characters. You have a wise son at times. You have a wise man. You have women who are strange, wicked, women who are virtuous. You have a, a mother who is rejoicing and a mother who is sad. And then you have these fools. In the book of Proverbs, I will tonight bring out to our attention, or the next tonight, maybe in two weeks as well, five types of fools. Five types of fools. If you look in Proverbs chapter 1, we'll begin in verse number 4, where the Bible says, "...to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion." Verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Verse number 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Lord, I thank you for the time we have tonight. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be open to your truth that our minds would be challenged by your word, but Lord, that you would touch us on a spiritual level. You would, you would touch us and change us, Lord, and we would be more like your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help me as I try to communicate some of these truths that you would give me clarity of speech and mind. And Lord, help me to clearly articulate those things and these truths that would not hinder your message. But Lord, help us to be soil that would be receptive to your truth. Lord, do something that only you can do now in these next few moments. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. About 40 or so years ago, about the time that I was born in the 80s, early 80s, I was born in 1980, about that time there was an old TV show out entitled The A-Team. Some of you remember it. In this old TV show, there was a certain individual by the name of Mr. T. Mr. T in this old TV show was known for a very specific saying. It was this saying, I pity the fool. I will not ask if you remember this or if you watched it back then, not to, date, to age you or date you or to have you have to come forward at the altar at the end of the service. But by the stickers throughout the audience, some of you ought to find your place at the altar tonight. And by the more snickers, because of your age, you might have to ask someone to help you up after you come to the altar as well. <laughs> I pity the fool. In this old TV show, his kind of slam or kind of a speech pattern of such that he was kind of um, making fun of those who would be foolish, those who would do stupid things. And in society, often when we call someone a fool in society, we are referring to a specific set of actions that would be just dumb. That would be a good word to describe it, just dumb actions. There are things that come from society that would be considered very foolish. 
A few years back, it was that teenagers were eating Tide Pods, laundry detergent. This is dumb. This is foolish. You ate, if you eat a Tide Pod, you would be a fool. I remember during this particular viral activity of those eating Tide Pods that there was a commercial on television of a NFL quarterback who got on the, the commercial with a pan and these Tide Pods, these little squares inside of it, and said, these are not for food, these are to wash your clothes with. And their hope was that those who were going to eat them would not eat them. Now, heaven help us when we resort to telling people not to eat Tide Pods by a commercial. All right, now, I don't know if they stemmed the tide. I think it was just a finally something that lost its allure, if there ever was any. All right. But there are many times things in society that we would view to be foolish, and quite frankly, they're just dumb. The minds have not engaged properly. Sometimes it'll be a group of teenage boys. And teenage boys, you will do what we will call foolish things. Girls, you're not that much exempt from it, only slightly less. But adults, adults, we can look at teenagers, but we can be guilty as well, can we not? Easy to point fingers at them, but remember there's a few pointing back at us as well. There are times adults that we maybe make a financial decision. And we get done with that financial decision, and boy, we're like, boy, that was uh, foolish. That was dumb. A fool. When we come to the book of Proverbs, though, it is not merely referring to some dumb actions, though that would for sure be included in some of the verses we will find. It would not just be some, some times when the mind wasn't engaged, though I think in Proverbs we will see that as well. When we come to the book of Proverbs and we learn about the five types of fools found in the book of Proverbs, the Bible paints a much more serious picture for us. You see, when we're in society, when we're in life and we do something dumb, sometimes you can just laugh it off. Oh, that was dumb. I won't do that again. I remember one time that my roommate was ironing his clothes and ironing his shorts. He was sitting down, ironing his shorts, and as he ironed his clothes, he went off the ironing board and onto his thigh. He yelled. That was dumb. And you walk away saying, wow, I won't do that again. But when we come to the book of Proverbs and learn about the fool, we cannot just say, whoops, I won't do that again. Oh, boy, that was dumb. No, no, we must approach it with the same seriousness that God brings this concept to us with. The seriousness that says, wait a second, the Bible is warning us to avoid these things and these characteristics and these tendencies, and I must, I must not seek, if I have done them, to repeat them, and I must be diligent to avoid these characteristics. These are not merely little things that we would necessarily laugh about. These are characteristics, tendencies, attitudes, and actions that God says has no place in the wise. You see, ultimately in Proverbs, we have two classes. We have the class of wisdom, those who are wise. A wise man, a wise lady, a, lo a wise mother, a wise wife, a wise son, a wise father. And we have all the foolish, all the fools, the foolishness. And we in Proverbs will either find that we are displaying wisdom and being called wise or being called a fool and the foolishness in our actions. As we approach Proverbs, and even as you read tomorrow on the 17th, it does not escape me what day of the week it is, tomorrow when you read Proverbs, you will find some of these word fools, and I hope you remember some of the things tonight, and you mark it a little bit and take a note of what it says tomorrow. I don't think I'm dealing with any passages from Proverbs 17 on purpose so that tomorrow you can discover those yourself. All right, so that's for you tomorrow. That's just a side note for those who like extra credit, and I know there's some many here who like extra credit. They want to raise their hand in class, teacher, 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 and uh, the one that everyone else wants to slap. Let's look tonight at five types of fools. We'll get through just a few, I imagine. The first one is this one. The first fool is a simple fool, a simple fool. You will find this particular name, nomenclature, 
referred to as simple, the simple, a simple one in the book of Proverbs. The simple fool, the definition being those open to any passing thought or idea. Those open to any passing thought or idea. Or basically, whatever this simple person hears, they listen and believe. We'll notice this from the passage of Scripture. This is what is referred to in Proverbs as the simple. The fact is, we know some people in life who are simple. We often call them, can you, you know the word I'm going to use here? We call them uh, gullible. You with me? Maybe you've even teased someone before and say, oh, gullible's on the ceiling, and they look up. Maybe you know someone like this. This is the simple fool, not to be lauded, all right, not to be uh, magnified or not to be honored. This is the simple person, those open to any passing thought or idea or any whim that comes along they will listen to, Proverbs 1, verse 4, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. This term simple, this word simple, you will find 15 times in the book of Proverbs. This word that is used, that is translated simple in your Bible, has the idea of this, one who is easily seduced. That is not just in a moral sense, though we will see that in just a minute. This word easily seduced has to do with not only moral sense, but also with their thoughts and ideas. Someone who is easily influenced. Who doesn't really think for themselves, but turns on the TV and whatever the TV says, they believe it. If the TV says to freak out because the storm of the century is coming, they freak out because the storm of the century is coming. If they go onto social media, then they are angry with this post and happy with this post. They have no discernment. They are simple. They are easily seduced. This is the simple fool in the book of Proverbs. And unfortunately, I have known and know some Christians who, according to this definition from Proverbs, we be, would be considered to, to be displaying actions of a simple fool who seem to be open to every concept, every wind of doctrine, every thought that comes along across their path, they just, they just take it in. They take it in. This is a simple fool. In a couple of descriptions in Proverbs, number one there, you're blank, they love, they love their ignorance. They love their ignorance. Proverbs 1, verse 22, How long, ye simple ones, Will ye love simplicity? They love not having any deep thoughts in life. I've met some people like this who don't want to even contemplate thinking of big concepts. They're like just, just all surface, all superficial, up and down, back and forth. And they love their ignorance. They're especially open, that next blank, to moral failings. Because they're easily seduced. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 6 through 23 talks about this, and I've included two of the verses, verses 7 and 8 in your notes. The writer, Solomon, here is speaking, and he says, And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house, dealing with a wicked woman, a strange woman, as, as Proverbs deals with her. Easily seduced, not just morally, but also with their mind and with their thoughts. And what the simple needs here, this last blank there, they need discretion to give subtlety to the simple. That word subtlety has the idea of understanding, discretion, and the ability to have discernment. And the response to the simple fool, is to allow God's wisdom to bring discernment to his life. When you come in Proverbs to these passages and you read the simple, take note of the simple and make sure that you and that I are not displaying any characteristics of the simple. When we avoid wisdom, 
When we don't do things God's way, we do not have the discretion and the discernment that we ought to have. We will find with all of these fools, they are avoiding God's path. They're avoiding God's wisdom. We cannot live life properly the way God intended without God's wisdom. Let me repeat that so you don't miss that. We, you, I, cannot live life properly the way God intended without God's wisdom. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be rich because you can be rich without God's wisdom. But that's not what God intended for you just to be rich. God never said, I'm going to save you so you can be rich as can be. Now, you may be rich following God, but you can't live life properly the way God intended without his wisdom. You can't do it. You don't have the knowledge without God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The discernment that we need comes from God. And sometimes what happens to Christians is they want to discern based on their own understanding. And Proverbs is is filled with those thoughts. Well, I'll just make this logical decision. But what we ought to do is seek God's wisdom. Seek his discretion and his discernment. I believe that this plays into sometimes, uh, this plays into the thoughts when we have to make decisions that aren't as clear as other decisions. We come to the discussion of music, which we did a whole series on about a year and a half ago, on music. And a lot of music comes down to discernment from God and his principles. But I've met young people, teenagers, who ask this question, well, what's wrong with fill in the blank? Even to the extreme of what's wrong with rap? You know what they're displaying? No discernment. How long will you simple ones, how long will you be simple? How long will you lack the discernment? If you don't have discernment in your life, you're displaying the characteristics of the simple fool. This in Proverbs would be considered, if I can uh, say it this way, the the, the highest or the, 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 the lightest level of fool, All right? The one that has a chance to come back. The one that has a chance to, to recover and please the Lord. As we get deeper inside the fools, you'll notice that the way that the Bible speaks of them, that God has to really grip their heart. The simple, though, just need discernment from God. It's a simple fix for the simple. A simple fix for the simple. Come back, get God's wisdom. Instead of leaning to your own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. He'll give you that discernment and that discretion. This is the simple fool. The next fool tonight, in the bottom of your page, I've labeled him the immature fool. The immature fool. One who is perverse and silly. This word for fool that will display fool is used ten times in the book of Proverbs. This fool would have some characteristics that we have used. In fact, one characteristic would be uh, that they look down on wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, that is this word, immature fool, the veal is the word in Hebrew. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. This would be the one that as someone is preaching, they would say, well, this is stupid. That is this fool, the immature fool. Well, that's ridiculous. Not someone who is trying to listen and say, wait a second, does that agree with the Bible? That's a different, that's not a fool. That's someone who is trying to study and show themselves approved, right? But this is a fool like, well, I'm not going to listen to that. This, that's ridiculous. God doesn't really mean that. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. That's someone who looks down on wisdom and instruction. This is one who would hear wisdom from an elder and walk away and reject it. Can you remember a king who did this? A king by the name of Rehoboam. The Bible says about Rehoboam that 
the, his father's counselors, the elder counselors came, and they gave him good counsel. And they said to Rehoboam, listen, your father, he ruled harshly. He ruled, he was tough. If you lighten up, these people will serve you forever. And then Rehoboam turned to the counselors who were his age, his friends. And they said, boy, don't listen to that wisdom and instruction. Reject that. And what you ought to do is come down even more. And your father, you tell them your father was tough, but I'll be even tougher. That is, by definition of Proverbs, a fool. Now, I would submit that Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, the son of the wisest man who ever lived, that Rehoboam learned how to reject counsel from his father. I would submit that Rehoboam learned how to be foolish from the example of the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon. Now, just bear with me for just a second. Solomon here, the wisest man who ever lived, who talked about money and women and acting right and fearing God, rejected all of those ideas. Solomon, we talked about women. He didn't take his own advice, did he? Not with 300 wives and 700 concubines. He sure didn't. Or is it 700 wives, 300 concubines? It's one of those ways I just lost in my mind. It's 1,000 women either way. Either way, it's 999 too many. Either way. He didn't take it with alcohol. Ecclesiastes tells us that. He, he, though he wrote about alcohol in, in, in Proverbs, Ecclesiastes tells us that he, that he tried it with wine and that didn't work. He tried it with money. Ecclesiastes tells us that as well. Read chapter 2. He tried all these things and couldn't find it. He tried it with mirth, with laughter. He basically tried to hire gestures. To, and all these things that Solomon said not to do, he did himself. So it's no surprise that Rehoboam acted just like he saw from his daddy. Why should I listen to my daddy? It didn't turn out all white for him. This fool who looks down on wisdom and instruction. This fool who gets in trouble with their mouth. Proverbs 10, verse 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Now, James chapter 3 reminds us, James chapter 3 reminds us that we all have the tendency to have this characteristic. Again, as we read Proverbs, we need to make sure that we're not displaying the characteristics of a fool. Maybe you've met someone who just doesn't know when to shut their mouth. Maybe you've been with them in public, and you're like, oh my goodness, I have got to walk away right now. I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed for all mankind. You're de-escalating a situation. Because this fool, according to Proverbs, is just running their mouth, and it is near destruction. It is near destruction. This is the characteristic of this immature fool in Proverbs. But oddly enough, this fool at the bottom thinks that what he does is just fine. This fool is not to be instructed. The Bible says about this fool, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. He says, listen, I've done nothing wrong. I had every right to get mad and run my mouth over there at Walmart or at that guy who pulled out in front of me, rolled his window down screaming at him. I had every right to do that. The way of this fool is right in his own eyes. He's justifying himself, justifying yourself. What I'm doing is just fine. Don't tell me that it was wrong. You, would have, you don't understand. This is that fool. Again, we can all display this tendency. Think of the rich man who came to Jesus. The Bible says, and he's seeking to justify himself. He wanted to justify his own actions. We all have that innate, foolish tendency called the flesh that says, listen, my way is the right way. You don't tell me I'm wrong. The Bible says this characteristic, this is the fool. This is a foolish characteristic. This fool mocks sin and sinful things. Proverbs 14, verse 9, fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The only response for this particular fool is only truth from the word of God will correct their thinking. This type of fool doesn't need your logic. He won't understand your reasoning. 
He's justifying himself. The only thing that will help this fool is the truth from the word of God, which will cut deep inside the soul and the spirit. The change has to come from the word of God with this fool in order to get them out of their immature, foolish state into a place of wisdom. It will not be anything you explain. It won't make sense to them. It won't, it won't be your tremendous logic. There have been times in the school, the 12 years that I was there, that we came across a student who I would have probably put into this particular category. Don't put them lightly, but just as you interact with them, as you talk with them, as you observe them, that they reject and despise wisdom and instruction. And they get in trouble with their mouth. That everything they do, they are fully justified in their mind. And they're telling you why what they did was right and why the rule, if there was one, was stupid. And why the staff is stupid and why the principal's stupid and why what they did was just right. Mocking sin and sinful things. Now I have found from experience and what I believe the Bible teaches that no amount of reasoning will fix that. But the word of God can fix it. The word of God. This is why it's so important to be in God's word every single day. 